Welcome to Sell the Need in Service to Sale webinar series. What we're going to talk about today is vision to value and in specifically mastering the art of identifying needs, creating solutions and delivering excellence. I am Renarda Jones, pharmacist and CEO of Thiessen Incorporated. I am an entrepreneur. I've started over 10 businesses now and I run a successful managed care consulting organization where we help Medicare insurance plans improve their quality ratings and in turn they receive millions of dollars from the government that they're able to use to offset premiums and deliver additional benefits and services to the Medicare beneficiaries that they serve. We have been in business for about seven years now and it is quite successful. And so throughout my entrepreneurial journey, I have done several different businesses from staffing agencies um, to this business, to real estate. Uh, so several things that I've done in the past. I'm also a Medicare insurance agent, uh, so I have a business for it. And I'm part owner for a drugstore uh, that's also in South Carolina. So several different businesses, different venues, different avenues. And what I want to do throughout this entire series is be able to help other entrepreneurs who are maybe just starting out and need to know what the foundation foundation is or folks that are starting out and don't know what they actually want to build a business around or maybe you already have a business and you've plateaued and you want to be able to scale uh, in the very near future so we're going to start today with the first in this series again vision to value mastering the art of identifying needs creating solutions and delivering excellence so what exactly are we going to talk about today we're going to talk about a few statistics around customer service, and then we're going to talk about how do you identify problems, and then once you identify those problems and you get all the solutions and stuff involved, what does it mean to sell the need and service the sale? Then we're going to go over a case study, and we're going to do some questions and answers. My hope for you, once we are done with this webinar on today, that you will be able to have an idea of how you can actually, number one, if you have a business but you do not have a product or service, be able to start identifying what products or services that you could offer. Two, if you, are, if you already have a business with products and services, a way that you can um, add additional products and services or see if there's any opportunities that you're leaving on the table with clients that you actually have. And the third thing that I want um, us to be able to get through today is no matter if you already have a product or service or if you're just getting started, understand the value of having great customer service as you service your clients from the time that you call them on the phone, cold calls and an email, meet them at a networking event to the time that you're actually explaining your product, that you're signing the contract, you onboarding them to the time that you're implement doing implementation throughout the entire life cycle of that contract. And even after that contract is over, you're still providing good customer service, okay? So those are the three things that I want us to be able to walk away with after this presentation is over. So let's look at some statistics. Number one, 68% of consumers say they are willing to pay more for products and services from a brand known to offer good customer service experiences. So that's your girl right here, okay? I am a Publix person. I prefer to shop at Publix. My very first job in high school was at IGA in Hartsville, South Carolina, and I was a cashier and I absolutely loved it. That's still to date my best job okay like i enjoyed everything about it i am obsessed with the grocery store from scanning the items and to making sure that if i've got 50 items how fast can i get through those 50 items so that i can help the bag boy even get to the back get to the bagging before the bag boy even gets there it's always about a race with me I, I don't know why but i loved the working at the grocery store so Publix is a place that i prefer to shop I know for sure that I am paying more to shop at Publix than if I were to go to a Kroger or a Bilo. Um, but I do not mind paying more because I think the stores are cleaner. I think the shelving is blocked so all the items are in order. I think that the customer service, the cashiers are friendlier. I think everything about it is just nicer and cleaner. So I'm willing to pay more to shop at Publix for their products and services than going to another store. A lot of people feel the same way about Chick-fil-A, okay? Uh, number two, 86% 
of uh, good customer service turns one-time clients into long-term brand champions. Having a long-term brand champion is so important for your business. If you can land a few brand champions, and I don't, I don't, let me back up. I don't want to keep saying if throughout this presentation. I want us to talk in the positive affirmation of when. So not if, but when. So when you land brand champions, these are so instrumental for your organization. What brand champions do, not only do they stick around and continue to do business with you, but they also share your business with other people who are in similar industries that can also use your services. The power of word of mouth can really, really, really sustain and propel your business. Number three, if the company's customer service is excellent, 78% of consumers will do business with them again, even after making a mistake. If you can be true, open, honest, authentic, if you make an error, you make an error, don't, and you found out the error before the client, go to the client and say, hey, I made this error. Or if they bring it to you, don't sit there and try to dispute it. Say, oh no, that, that wasn't me, that was on somebody else. If it was you, own up to it. And because you're already giving a good product service with great customer service, this statistic here tells you that 78% of those folks will still do business with you even after you made a mistake because you have such good customer service. Next, more than 70% of consumers believe that companies should collaborate on their behalf so they don't have to repeat information to different representatives. Okay, so have y'all ever called the help desk about something and say you talk to Paul and Paul said, oh, you can need to go do steps one, two, and three. And then you hang up with Paul and you go do steps one, two, and three, but step two doesn't work. And so you call back to the, uh, to the call center, the help desk, and you get Paulette. And Paulette says, oh, um, can you tell me what's going on? And you're like, well, can't you look in the system and see what Paul, and I just talked to Paul and see what he said and told me the steps to do. Um, but now you've got to repeat everything that you just said because Paul didn't take good notes. So now Paulette doesn't know what's going on and now you've got to repeat yourself. I hate when that happens. So what we do is we use a CRM or a client relationship management tool. And I encourage you, if you are a new business owner, if you are a current business owner, wherever you're at, to have some type of tool in place where you can keep up with not just only your clients and your leads and your prospects, but you also want to be able to keep track of interactions. So in the business that we're in at PSIN, we're calling members and pharmacies and doctor's offices. It's important that we're keeping track of those notes when we talk to that person, what time that we talk to that person, what did that person say, who talked to them, because when we go back to follow up tomorrow or if somebody makes an inbound call in, the same person who handled it originally may not be the person that's picking up the in inbound call. So you want to make sure that nobody has to repeat anything because everything's right there stored in the system and you can just pick up where they left off. 70% of customers report that technology makes it simple to take their business to a competitor if needed. This happened with us uh, probably three months ago. We use ADP as our payroll service. And so at the pharmacy, we have about six employees at that time. We had about 16 at PSIN. And so my business partner was like, you know, I think we're going to use somebody local for the payroll at the pharmacy versus using continuing to use ADP. And I'm all about using local businesses, okay? I'm, I'm a, a try and support small businesses, especially those that are locally owned. So I have no problem with that. However, I also pay for convenience and pay for things that are comprehensive in nature. So if you are paying employees and you use ADP, you know how comprehensive the system is. They can log in, they can put in their time, it does all your taxes for you. Uh, you can change out your bank account information, it has an online portal. It's not a lot that I have to do as a business owner because ADP takes care of a lot of it. So I asked him, I said, well, you move the pharmacy first and then you, let's see how much manual work has to be done. And then if it's not that bad, then we'll move it for a piece in. Well, what's important about this point that I'm making on this slide is that that company was able to do a feed from ADP using technology where we wouldn't have had to go back in and manually set any of these people up. So that just goes to show you how easy it was for them to steal ADP's business using technology. Now, here's where they failed, the servicing the sale part of it. Uh, it was it was has too many manual capabilities for me. And so therefore, uh, PSIN's not moving, but the pharmacy did move. 80% of customers say the experience a company provides is just as necessary as its products or services, okay? 
people or at least me, I don't like doing business with people that I don't like, okay? It's one thing to be an employee and you can't pick your coworkers. It's a whole nother thing to own a business and hire employees that just don't fit your culture. Um, that's not what you want to be involved with every day. The last thing I wanna do is to pay someone who is not a cultural fit for my entire team. And when I say cultural fit for our team, we, we love to work hard. We take pride in the work that we do. And we take it to heart when something goes wrong, when a mistake is made, okay? We're trying to figure out how do we fix it? How do we get better? My entire team is bought, bought in to our customer service model, okay? It's all about delivering great customer service, not just to the end user, meaning the Medicare beneficiary, but also to the client that's paying us and the ones that they may refer us out to. Okay, so why would I want to bring in somebody who does not have a great customer service track record? Okay, it just doesn't fit. Or somebody that just has a bad attitude, it doesn't fit. I don't care how many phone calls you can make, I don't care how much work you can get done. If you do not have the personality, then it's, it's just not going to be a good fit. Uh, even with your clients, you, I don't want to do business with clients that I just don't like, okay? Uh, and so I've always been an advocate is that you don't need everybody's business, okay? Because again, it's one thing to work with people because you have to, uh, and, and they're not people that, if, that are fun to work with, but it's a whole nother thing to have to be tied to somebody who's just beating you down all the time and treating you more like a vendor than a partner. Some relationships you just don't want to do because then this is going to bleed over into something else. So said all of that to say, make sure the experience that somebody has with your staff, what somebody has with you is always going to be a positive experience. And you do that by leading with great customer service. And lastly, 63% of consumers expect businesses to know their unique needs and expectations, while 76% of business-to-business -business buyers expect the same thing. This is all about anticipating the need, y'all. I tell my uh, clients all the time, if you let me get my foot in the door, I'm not going anywhere. Okay, and that's because once I get in on the contract that we've agreed upon, I'm always looking for other areas uh, and opportunities that I might be able to be able to come up with a solution and actually monetize to just continue to build my footprint. So whenever you get it, so whenever you're getting with these clients, make sure you're always anticipating the needs that they may actually have in addition to what you already provide them. So the first step is to look for problems, okay? And problems are absolutely everywhere. Sometimes you may have to look a little longer. Sometimes they're staring at you right in your face. Um, but whatever the case may be, you always should be looking for problems and opportunities. And I think as an entrepreneur, that's what you're doing anyways, is because you, you saw a need and you saw yourself as having the expertise to be able to fill that need. And that's just usually how entrepreneurs work. So where do you actually look for problems? So a couple of areas, laws, guidance, regulations. So for me, CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, they create the problems for me, okay? Um, it, 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 some of you may have heard of the Inflation Reduction Act uh, that was passed into law by the Biden administration in 2022. Well, there's a part in there about health care and Medicare. And one of the provisions goes live January 1st, 2025. It's called M3P, which is short for Medicare Prescription Payment Plan. Medicare beneficiaries will be able to go to the pharmacy and not pay anything out of their pocket for their drugs because they'll in turn be making payments to the plan um, so they can spread those drug costs out over the year. Well, it could potentially be an implementation nightmare um, trying to make sure that plans are ready to go live January 1, 2025, because there's so many missing parts and pieces. So from my uh, viewpoint, I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at the guidance and I'm going to say, okay, are there any things in here that we can do as a company? Is there any solutions that we have or we can provide for any of those things in here? Um, so that's one way that you can identify problems is just by looking in the guidance and the things that people have already posted out there for you. Reddit, Google Trends, and YouTube. So I just joined Reddit a few, probably about a month ago now, and I joined it for the Medicare topic. So I also sell Medicare insurance. And in selling Medicare insurance as an agent, um, I go on to Reddit to see what questions Medicare beneficiaries have. And then I take that and I post videos and make videos on my YouTube channel because if one Medicare beneficiary had that question, and then it's probably a bunch of other Medicare beneficiaries that's had that uh, has that problem also. Well, 
The other thing that is good about Reddit, Google Trends, and YouTube uh, for looking for um, problems is you get to see what problems people are having, and then you can figure out, do you have a solution for that uh, said problem? And then news, okay, so the news itself may talk about uh, different opportunities in the industry. And so maybe if, you're a real, uh, maybe if you're a real estate agent and then you notice that the interest rates are dropping through the news, then maybe that's the time where you're really ramping up um, your sales and marketing so that you can get more houses sold, okay? Public ratings. Public ratings are things like uh, Google reviews, uh, open table reviews. Uh, so I have a colleague and she's she's her business is all around customer service and she wants to do it for the hospitality industry. So one of the places I recommend that she look is Google reviews. So you can go to a restaurant's page and you can see what the comments are. And if it's the food is great, but the customer service is terrible, that's an opportunity for her to go into that restaurant and that establishment and say, Hey, I see from your public reviews, you're having some difficulties in the customer service. Here's the package that I have to offer to you. Uh, Mark Cuban said in his master class that whenever he goes to places like, uh, you know, a coffee shop or a restaurant or a grocery store or wherever, he's always looking for how are they doing the process now? And if he were the owner, how could he do it? Would he do it differently? Is there some opportunity to do it better? Okay, so that's what you should be thinking about as an entrepreneur. Everywhere you go, your head should always be thinking, how can I look for these problems? Is the problem something that I can actually solve? Is there a better way to do what I'm already seeing that's in the solution? What does it mean to sell the need? Okay, so sell the need services sale is actually a life insurance term and it came from an ethics course that I had to take. So in order to be a Medicare agent, you have to keep your um, license active and it's a life accident and health. And so I, I'm not a life insurance expert. I've never sold a policy, don't plan to, but I have to have that particular um, license in order to sell Medicare health insurance. And so whenever I was doing the ethics module, it was talking about sell the need and services sale. And what that means is as an insurance agent, a life insurance agent, you should never sell someone a policy that is too much or too little for what their needs are. So you have to go in and you have to assess the needs. So say you've got a family of four, a husband, a wife, two kids. Um, the family in revenue is $120,000 a year. Does that person need an $8 million life insurance policy? Probably not. Does that person need a $60,000 life insurance problem, uh, policy? No, because that's probably too little. And so you don't want to sell them not enough, and you also don't want to sell them anything egregious because that is unethical, okay? And then the service to sell part comes by whenever you're going to make sure that the premium gets submitted on time, that first premium, the application gets submitted on time. Uh, once the policy is written, that draft has to get out to the to the policy hold, holder. They have to go through it. They're asking you questions, whether or not um, this premium looks different than the premium you charged me. I have some questions about this. They have a review period. So you're there servicing the sale from when you actually meet with them to the time that you're actually submitting the premiums and the application to the time that the policy is actually received by them and if they have any questions during that look during that window um, before they're stuck so much with the policy but I'm not gonna call it stuck because you did the right thing that you were supposed to do you gave them the right policy you explained it well with great customer service so the policy is, was exactly what they needed so that's the service to sell piece of it all right let's go over the four parts of selling the need it's going to be around problem analysis action planning recommendation and implementation under problem analysis, you're going to have to use your ears, okay? you got to be a good listener. Um, I can't stand when people listen just to talk, okay? And you can tell it when they're doing it because uh, they're listening at you, but it's like they're leaned in and they're waiting for you to stop so they can say something. You cannot be that kind of listener and be in an entrepreneurial space because you're going to miss opportunities, okay? Uh, so you, wanna, you want to use your ears to find out what is the problem. Even your eyes, y'all. Yeah, use your ears and your eyes because when I'm going through that, uh, guidance so looking for what is written by CMS I'm trying to figure out what problems exist that my client may have okay who has the problem okay what other people in the industry may have that problem so what I was talking about earlier with the Inflation Reduction Act that applies to any Medicare plan that offers a prescription drug product okay so who has the problems uh, um, is is what you're looking at for that one where is the opportunity? So what level is it at? The whole IRA thing, that's a huge opportunity. And it's 
Like I just said, it's everywhere where there's a Medicare Advantage product that has a prescription drug plan tied to it. And who made it an opportunity? That's important because it also can relate to the urgency that the client actually has to implement. So let's say in this example, again, with CMS, it's pretty urgent because regulatory body CMS says it's got to be in place by January 1st, 2025. So that, because it's done by a regulatory body, has already given a, a, a certain level of urgency that these people have to find a vendor, they have to find a solution so that they can actually be um, in, in, in guidance. So who made it an opportunity is important. Next is action planning. Can the problem be solved? Now, I always look for problems and solutions, uh, but not all problems can be solved. They're going to be, uh, and, and I should say, not all problems could necessarily be solved uh, by you. Um, I do believe we can spark change, um, but like the healthcare system, I'm a pharmacist, like I said, the healthcare system is in shambles. Uh, the only way I really see fixing it is to throw it all away and just starting over. Uh, and so it's not necessarily that it can't be solved. It's just going to take a tremendous amount of work to uh, get it solved, okay? And so what you're looking for is not only can it be solved, but can it be solved by you? If there's something that you can't solve in that particular one, or you don't have a vendor that can solve it, that you can connect the two together, move on to something else, okay? How can you solve the problem? Um, or So how can you solve the problem? Do you have something that is already built? So bullets two and three go together. So do you have something internally built that you can actually use to solve the problem? So we had a client who came to us and said that one of their pharmacy directors was having to retire and they only were able to give a four week notice, okay? So when you're working in these corporate jobs, trying to fill a position in four weeks is pretty much impossible. And so that was gonna leave a gap in their team during a very critical um, time. So when they came to me and let me know, uh, the first thing I did was they wanted to pick my network. So I made a post on LinkedIn to see if there was anybody who could go ahead and start sending in resumes uh, so we can get them looking at them to see if they were gonna be a fit. And then from there, um, I said, well, you know what? Because I'm anticipating their needs. I said, in the meantime, I have filled these fractional roles before. And I use the word fractional. You can use the word temporary, but it's basically bringing in a subject matter expert who is able to work not as a consultant, so to speak. They'll, they'll label you as consultant, but literally you're going in as that person and you're picking up where they left off and you're, and you're running with the projects that they have. Um, and so... I offered that service to them, so I had that solution ready. Now, I had another client, this is actually how our concierge pharmacy program got started. He came to us and he said, Renarda, he said, do you think that you all could build a service around helping these members get their needed prescription drugs? And I said, well, tell me more. And I listened to him and what he wanted to accomplish, and I said, absolutely. Well, we can do that. And so that's actually how our concierge pharmacy program got started. So you may not have the solution already built, um, but, you all, but you may have the means to build that solution. The other thing I will tell you is about pre-sale. So I have a managed care online course that we sell. I sold that course before it was 100% finished okay so some of you may be thinking oh i've got to have everything figured out from a to z before i can go to market and sell no you don't um you can if you've got the idea there's nothing wrong with pre-selling what you actually have and oftentimes when you pre-sell it puts a sense of urgency behind you especially when you start to see people buy it because now you've got to finish it because you've already sold it um, I'm a 10x business coach with Grant Cardone, and he's, he uses this analogy. He says, the, your cell phone is the biggest thing that's not finished, but you buy. And all they do is when something is broke or something needs a new release, it's called a software update, okay? So think of your products exactly as that. You may be releasing it for sale, and it's not 100% finished, then you just do a software update. Phone companies do it all the time. So try to start thinking in, 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 in that manner. And then can you build the solution? And we talked about that. Expertise is huge, y'all, in this bucket because you can't necessarily move on to step three, which is implementation, if you don't have the level of expertise to fully analyze that problem and actually come up with some proposed solutions. So you're going to have to be an expert in the field. 
All right, product recommendations is next. This is education. All right, so I try and listen to what the problem is, do the analysis, and then when I'm doing my recommendation, I'm using all the information that I've gathered from the client and I'm presenting it in a way to make it to make the client realize that the solution that I've come up with, the solution that I'm offering was their idea, okay? And by that, what I mean is you're going to listen to the problem, you're gonna identify the suite of solutions that are available, and you're gonna narrow down what the solution should be. Now, not all times is my solution the best solution, so you always wanna do the right thing. If I am not the person for the solution, but I found another vendor that is, then you're gonna recommend that vendor, okay? But from an education standpoint, you want to tell the client and implement and, and recommend to the client the strategy and the solution that you vetted that's going to best fit their needs. What this does then is it leaves a decision in their hands and you've given them enough credible information so that they can make an informed decision and that empowers your client to stick behind the decision that they made. The broker I work for, for selling Medicare, has a saying that we've never sold an insurance policy in our entire lives. We educate the Medicare beneficiary on the best product for them and allow them to make an informed, educated decision on which plan they should actually enroll in. So education is very important when you're coming to your product recommendations, and it's also gonna help you build people into brand champions because now people are not necessarily making decisions because somebody told them to. They fully understand and are educated on that viable solution, and they can go back internally and explain it and stick behind it as you go through implementation. Which brings us to implementation. You're not gonna just do the consulting piece of it. Here's the solutions. Um, you can do that. There's a lot of companies that do that. So let me back up. There's a lot of companies that do that. If that's what you wanna do, that is fine, okay? So there's a lot of consultants out there and that is, that is absolutely fine. My company, on the other hand, we take it a step further and we actually implement. The reason we do the implementation piece is because when I'm doing the problem analysis, I know there are a lot of consultant, uh, consulting firms out here that will just go in and give you the strategy. And I also know that these health plans, what they don't have is the manpower to execute the strategy. They don't have the manpower and they don't have the time, okay? So they're looking for someone who can say, okay, these all these ideas and the strategy is great, but where am I going to get the time and the people to do it? So that's my competitive edge is by taking it all the way through to implementation. You do not have to do that. You can look in your industry and see maybe you're, the industry you're in, all you need to go uh, the further you need to go is just the consulting piece. That is fine, but I would encourage you to find that competitive advantage that you can add to to make your service better um, and a differentiator from the market, okay? So you're gonna, impl we implement the agreed solution um, with exemplary customer service. Now, customer service just does not stop just when your contract is signed, okay? When you're out at these networking events, you're getting leads, you're talking about the product, you're gathering all the information, the problem analysis, all that kind of stuff. All the customer service elements must be there from e before they're even a client, before they're even a prospect, all the way through implementation and then after implementation. Let's use an example from my Medicare business. Uh, whenever I bring on a client, um, I am going through to make sure all their drugs are covered, uh, what the drug copays are going to be, are there physicians in the network, letting them understand how to navigate the website, uh, answer any questions that they may have, uh, and then I sign them up into the plan and I follow up with them once they get their ID cards and they get their packets in the mail and help them to understand it. I check on them at least twice a year just to see if they have any questions. Now, I would, if I was doing that full time, would like to maybe call them once a month or once every other month, uh, but I just don't have the time because of my other business. But that is how you're talking about servicing the sale after. Just because I got the commission and they'll, as long as they stay with me and don't leave, I'll get the commission every year. I'm not just not going to continue to service that client. And so the part with PSIN when it comes to good customer service around execution is we should have a fairly flawless implementation. And then after that, we're gonna be delivering all the promises and the services that we said we were gonna deliver upon. What does it mean to service the sale? Okay, so the solution is the three rights. This is very, very important. And I can't take credit for it. I got it from someplace else. But the three rights are you're gonna to have to make sure you've got the right people, the right process, and the right technology. If you fail to have one of these three, you're probably not going to be successful.
okay? And so it's gonna be very important, even if you are a solopreneur and you're doing this all by yourself, then that means that you're gonna to have to be the right people. And whenever you get ready to hire folks, then you're also gonna to have to know when is the best time to hire people and you're gonna to have to hire the right people. The right process, meaning, whatever the solution is that you have come up with with your client that's got to be the right process to get that solution implemented okay and then the right technology you got to have the right technology to support the overall process so that you can actually be successful so i'm going to break this down to show you how this works at PSIN. okay so we talked about the people already i can train folks on the verbiage of, of pharmacy language, okay? I actually have a young lady on my team who's in nursing school. She's not a pharmacy technician. Like most of our staff, it's pharmacy technician or pharmacist. Um, and then we got software engineers on, on the IT side. Um, however, I can teach somebody how to say atorvastatin, which is used for cholesterol. What I can't teach somebody is how to be nice, how to be polite, how to exhibit good customer service, okay? So when you're hiring the right people and you're thinking about the right people, you gotta look at it as skill set, things that are teachable, and then skill set, things that are, uh, that are not teachable. And whenever you can find the balance between the two, uh, that's when you're gonna know that you've got the right people in place for it. The right process, okay? So when we're calling to help uh, the member get their medications uh, refilled at the pharmacy or get a prior authorization done or, or explaining to them quantity limits or why this drug isn't covered and they need to use another drug, you, you gotta have the right process. And the right process for one member may not be the right process for another member. However, the foundation should be the same. When we're calling on the phones, we're, we're verifying their birthday because that's something fundamental. You, got, you have to be able to make sure that whoever you're talking to is somebody that you can actually talk to about protected health information. Uh, number two, what does it sound like to explain to them what it means that their drug is not covered? It is a script, but it's not scripted, okay? Um, and then from there, what are the next steps? We need to do X, Y, and Z in order for us to get this approved by the insurance company so that we can cover it for you or we can call the doctor's office and get this medication changed. That's the process, okay? So the skeleton of the process has to be able to work and it has to fit with the solution that you're offering the client. The right technology, we talked about that with our CRM tool. So whenever we get all these paid claims and rejected claims in, we're running an algorithm and it's telling us who we actually need to outreach. And then from there, when we're doing the outreaches, we're able to document in that system and say, hey, I talked to Ms. Betty this morning. Uh, she's okay with us calling the physician's office to get her prior authorization started. Call the physician's office. Dr. Taylor said that he is going to go ahead and send in the information for the prior authorization. I checked the system. I see it's been a, a received by the PBM. They're reviewing it. We'll follow up later to see if it's gotten approved. So what you just saw in that is the right people because the right people took the right notes. That was a very thorough note. It was the right process because they called the member, got the permission. Once they called the member, they called the doctor's office. Once they called the doctor's office, they checked to make sure that it made it into the right system and then the right technology. All of that was documented in a system that we can actually use if, uh, uh, if Mrs. Um, Jones actually calls back. And I don't remember what the lady's name I gave in the example. But if she calls back, uh, we'll be able to go in the system and see what was done. And, and she doesn't have to repeat herself. So you got to have the right people, you got to have the right process, and you got to have the right technology. And they all three go hand in hand. If you are a solopreneur and you're thinking, well, man, Renarda, it's just me by myself. Um, I don't have all these things in place. So here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Who can you partner with? to provide you the, the two or the one that you're missing. Uh, so I work with a nurse practitioner. She's a consultant in the health plan space and she's a one person solo team. And we've done some projects with her in the past because she's won, uh, she's won contracts where she needed a certain level of expertise on the pharmacy side. That wasn't necessarily her level of expertise, but she sold it as I know someone who is an expert in this space that I can help. So in that particular case, she vendored with us to help support her contract and deliver on her client's needs. So if you yourself don't have the right people process and technology, who can you partner with to actually um, uh, provide the solution? When you're collaborating with people, 
here's a here's one thing I'll tell you. Don't count people's pockets. So don't say, well, wonder how much she's charging. Um, and she got the contract, and is she charging three hundred dollars an hour? But she's only paying me a hundred dollars an hour, and she's keeping two hundred dollars. But I'm doing all the work. You, you don't you don't count people's pockets, okay? If you are able and willing to do the job at the rate that they gave you or the rate that you asked for and they agreed to, then you keep it pushing, okay? Don't worry about what somebody else is making or why didn't you get that contract because you're the expert. Do not do that. That is going to set you up for mental failure when it comes to your business. So if you're not able to do these three, have these three rights on your own, see who you can collaborate with um, to do so. Say you're saying, well, Renata, you got all this stuff about this CRM. I don't have a CRM. Uh, well, you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to look and see if there's a CRM that you can actually purchase. There's HubSpot that's out there. Um, if that's too expensive, what you're going to do is what can I do in an Excel spreadsheet? And we're actually going to have a module that we we'll talk about um, where you can do some of these things in Excel until you're able uh, to um, hire and purchase the right technology. Okay, so the main gist of this story is you got to have the right people, you have to have the right process, and you have to have the right technology. If you do not have one of those three pieces, then you're going to want to collaborate with somebody who does and can actually help you provide that solution to the um, uh, to the client. Now, it is very possible that for some of these for some of these positions, you have all the three rights because you could be a consultant and you are the right person for the consultant. So, like that fractional position I'm doing, I am the right people. I don't need the rest of my staff to fill this fractional role. Uh, the right process is me filling in because I've done that role before, okay? So that is the right process and the right technology. Well, there isn't any technology I need other than my computer uh, and the internet because everything else is working behind their virtual um behind their virtual workspace. So I don't want you to overcomplicate things. It's all dependent on what your products and your services are. Um, but having the right people, the right process, and the right technology, that's going to set you up to be able to scale later. And so you've got to have this foundation in place because I can promise you there was a time when I was doing all the calls uh, for PSIN. I was landing the business, and then our first client, I was the one making all the phone calls myself. And from there, we progressed to hire, to getting office space, hiring an employee, bringing on interns, and then just hiring more employees. You're going to learn a lot from the things that I did not do, um, that I did not write down, that I did not document. And that's what I want to share with other folks that are just getting started um, to, to know what those foundation things should be so that when you do get up to 16 employees, you're not like, oh, my employee handbook ain't right, my offer letter ain't right, um, I don't have this set up correctly. So all those things that I learned, I want to be able to share throughout this entire series. So for now, make sure you have the right people, the right process, and the right technology, and that is going to be your solution. So let's go over a case study. So in this case study, this is um, what we do at PSIN again. And just to refresh your, uh, your memory, it says Medicare has allocated almost $7 billion to the quality bonus payment pool. Um, this could equal about $500 per member per year for plans that achieve at least a four-star rating on CMS's five-star scale. So the from the client standpoint, what they see on the table is millions of dollars if they can get a four-star, at least four stars on CMS's five-star scale. And so then they have to go through all these quality metrics and say, okay, which ones do we focus on? Which ones do we need help with? And that's when we come into, into play. The CAPS measure, which is the member experience measure, was had a weighting of four for the past couple of years. This is going to be the last year. And so that's heavily weighted. So therefore, our concierge CAPS program was very popular because if, not if, but when we improve those scores, it counted four times uh, towards what their individual star rating was. OK, and so in that case study, what we realized was we do adherence, which is three times the weight. Caps is four times the weight. We really need to be pushing these two products during this season because that's anticipating the client's needs. OK, because the CMS has already said that the weighting is four times. So we're going to know that they're looking for these particular products. Um, and then so that's selling the selling the need portion of it and then servicing the sale. We're making sure that we're providing a viable service and that we have we can show results of how we've improved their ratings. And when I tell you all about good customer service, I don't want you just to focus on the customer service that you're providing to the person who's paying you. So in, my, in our business structure, the health plan is paying our business. 
we're not just providing great customer service to the health plan, but we're providing good customer service when we're on the phone with the member, the doctor, uh, whoever we have to call the pharmacy. We do not call or try not to call pharmacies between 4.30 and 6 o'clock because as pharmacists, we know how busy the retail market is during that time. So we try and, and give good customer service by not calling during those times because the last thing the pharmacy wants to do is hear a phone call, especially from the insurance company, uh, during rush hour, okay? So that's just showing great customer service. You may not think people pick up on that, but people do pick up on that. People pick up on the fact that you call during the op more opportune times of the day. You're not calling and being a burden because you're calling at 5.30 and mad rush hour is going on. So when you're looking at the solution that you're actually providing, please make sure that you're not just providing good customer service to the person who's paying you, but every single interaction in between as it relates uh, to that client. Okay, so in summary, let's talk about sell the need. And those four steps was to identify the problem, solve the problem, sell the solution, and implement the solution, okay? We talked in depth about those. And then we have a worksheet that we're gonna, I'm gonna go over and walk through one for you. And then service the sale. Always remember to deliver great customer service. You're gonna hire the right people implement the right process, use the right technology, and you have to continue to anticipate client needs. Always be transparent and please, by all means, think of yourself as a partner and not a vendor, okay? You're a partner, not a vendor, all right? And then next steps. So next steps is you should have um, downloadable copies of Sell the Need and Service the Sale worksheets. And so in these worksheets, um, I want you to take some time to go through them. So let's go through sell the need and I'll walk through um, uh, one of them with my business and try to give some other examples as well. So number one, I want you to list out problems that are related to your line of business regardless if a solution exists or not. So if you are an entrepreneur that do not yet have an idea, I want you to start with your level of expertise, Where what are you good at? And then I want you to think about all the problems that are related to your expertise and I don't care if a solution exists or not. If you know that you are very good with operations and figuring out project management tasks from beginning to end, I don't want you to say, oh, well, there's a lot of project management companies out there now. I, I don't need to put that down. Put it down, okay? So whatever your level of expertise is, I want you to put down any problems that's, that you can solve that's related to what you're an expert in. For me, uh, because I'm already in the Medicare space, I put the Medicare prescription payment plan as a problem that's facing my line of business, which is going to be my health plan clients. And so that's where what we talked about, where the members can go to the pharmacy next year and not pay out of pocket. And so there's a lot of opportunity there. So I wrote it down. Number two, list out solutions that exist for the identified problems. And so I literally got paid to do this for a client. They wanted someone who could help vet vendors that could solve the M3P problem and could help them out. And so um, do they do it in-house and build it out or do they hire a vendor? Okay, so I want you to list out all the solutions. Maybe it's a solution that you already have. Uh, maybe it's something that somebody else has and you want to um, list it. So anything, any solution that's available, I want you to put it on under number two. And number three, it says brainstorm if you can provide a better solution to what may already exist. Okay, so I knew what vendors already had. Um, I knew from what I interviewed with folks, nobody wanted to do the customer service piece. Okay, so is there a way to do what that particular vendor can do better? Maybe not, uh, not for what, what I'm trying to do. So I wouldn't explore that. But I did identify there's a gap. Nobody wants to handle the customer service piece. So then you would put customer service pieces, what I put on here, um, as the other piece being too far out of my lane trying to solve the M3P, but the customer service is absolutely something that I can do because I already typically, uh, technically run a call center. Number four, what solutions could be developed to solve the problem? So regardless if you can do it or not, what solutions exist uh, that could solve that problem? 
All right, and sometimes when you're doing this, you'll see some gaps. So just like when I was interviewing the vendors uh, for that M3P solution, I realized they had the operations piece uh, down, but they didn't want to do customer service. So as you're doing this exercise, you may know that a certain vendor or competitor is doing something well, but you may also identify something that they're not doing that is a gap or something that they're not doing as well as their main thing that you can actually capitalize on and do it for them. Number five, can, you, can your solution be delivered in multiple different packages? And so this is what we call do-it-yourself, um, done for you, and uh, done with you, okay? So it starts with do-it-yourself. And so for this one, um, I like to use the example of a pharmacy intern who has a meal replacement or a who has a meal subscription service. And so what happens is the do-it-yourself model would be maybe she gave you a recipe book and said, here's all these healthy recipes and a grocery store list that you can go to a grocery store and shop for. That's DIY. That's do it yourself. And then you have DWY, which is done with you. So maybe she provides you everything in the DIY, but then she also goes and says, I'm going to give you a 30 minute tour where I walk with you through the grocery store and help you pick out items that you need and tell you the why behind the list. So that's done with you. And then you have a done for you. So she, um, offers the meals already cooked, already packaged, and they just deliver it right to your door. And so that's gonna be the done for you package. Another thing uh, would be how um, my managed care course. Uh, there's a do it yourself model, or I just list out a bunch of links that's that shows that's done do it yourself. You can go and read all this stuff. Um, done with you is the actual course. I'm gonna let, uh, got all these modules recorded and then a DFY a done for you would be if I offered up one-on-one -on -one coaching with those folks to help them go through the material answer any questions go through the job prep uh, try and find a job and do all that um, to, along with the managed care course that would be done for you okay um, and then whenever you have those three, that's going to lead into number six, because you're going to brainstorm on how you can monetize the solution for the problem. And so you want to try and have three packages. And so your DIY might be very low cost. It might be um, like less than $10 or whatever, depending on what your service is, or it may be free. It could be like a lead magnet. So I have an ebook um, that I'm going to be releasing to help people who want to become a Medicare agent. That ebook is probably going to be no charge. Okay. But then the do it with you a model is going to be the actual course that I have that goes with it. Um, so they can purchase a course for um, learning how to become a, an agent and then the done for you. And they can actually walk through how they actually retain work up their clients in a, uh, in a, in a one-on-one -on -one coaching type session. And as you go up with the levels, you go up in price. So again, the do-it-yourself model may be your lead magnet. It may be the one that you're giving away for very low cost or no charge at all. Uh, the DWY could be your mid-range product. And then the done-for-you product is always going to be your more expensive one. Uh, even for what this whole sell the need service to sale uh, series is going to be about, uh, it's going to have... Uh, both of all three of those components. So this webinar uh, is going to be the do it yourself. So this is me invoking ideas and, um, and helping you to figure out what your product or service are going to be helping you to know the importance of having customer service and great customer service wrapped around your product. Uh, from there, if you are a, a new entrepreneur who has not set your business up yet, I have a package that where I walk you through beginning to end how you actually set your business up. Then we're going to have marketing classes and sales classes and money mindset classes. All of these things are going to come a part of a package. Uh, and then from there, if you want to do group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching, then that's also going to be available. Okay. So the webinar is going to be in the do it your self model at no charge. Um, and then the YouTube videos that show you how to set up your, your companies, that's under the do it yourself for no charge. The spreadsheet that has um, how you actually register your business in every state, that'll be a part of that do it yourself uh, package that is no charge. And then the workbook journal that will accompany that, that's going to be a more of the mid range, do it with you. And then eventually it will have a done for you um, model where we do one on one coaching.
All right, the other spreadsheet is service to sale. And what I want you to do when you start to do that is I want you to start thinking about how you can service your customer. And, and this is even when they are a prospect, they may not even sign the contract yet. Uh, so number one, describe the characteristics of the right people for the solution, okay? And so for us, the right people for the solution is a team that has great customer service. So we hire pharmacy technicians and pharmacists. Um, however, they have to have good customer service. If, like the person we have on our team that's not a pharmacy technician or a pharmacist, she's got great customer service, I can teach her the rest of it. She's actually in nursing school. Um, and so that's, that's I can certain, teach certain skill sets, but you cannot teach good customer service. So for us, it would have to be somebody that has great customer service skills. Number two, describe the right process for the solution. Um, so for this one, you want to think of it as an end-to-end -end solution is how we like to think of it. Um, maybe a consultant house picked, uh, gave a strategy to a plan, but again, like I said earlier, they don't have anybody to execute it. It wouldn't make good sense and good customer service for me to come in and say, hey, I'm going to, uh, I'll go in and write up a strategy for you and then I'll implement it. And they're like, well, I already got a strategy. Um, so what we would do, because this is great customer service and it's the right thing to do, let me take their strategy, I'll review it, and more than likely it's probably going to be something you would have done anyways, and then you just pick up and you implement that strategy. That's That that would be what we would do. Um, we just pick up that um, strategy and implement it for the client. Okay, so what does that right process look like? And then the right technology for the solution, again, we're talking about our CRM, how we keep up with uh, all the notes and all the calls uh, so that we know exactly what people called about and what we have to follow up on. Number four, what potential upsells exist when servicing your client? What other areas may there be problems that you can solve? This is always you anticipating the need. So when we talked about the pharmacy intern that has the meal, uh, meal delivery service, uh, one of the things that she may do after you've asked for the meal delivery service is, would you like a dessert? Okay, so do you want to add dessert to your order? Uh, so that kind of thing could be like your upsells. Uh, and the other thing is what other problems have that you can solve? And so that goes back to what I talked about earlier. And when once you're in with these clients, with the contract that you have, what other problems do they have that you can actually solve? Uh, so you want to always be looking at, the, at that as well. And this is more for people that already have your business in place. I certainly want you to look at the service to sale portion of it because that's going to give you an idea of what you can do right now for the, for the business that you have. For those of you that have not gotten your first client yet, um, because that first client is coming, I can promise you that. Uh, what I want you to do is start thinking about the products and services that you have from sell the need um, into once that product is delivered and, and up and sold to that client, what are these things that you can do to help service that client? Number five, how can you use exemplary customer service as a differentiator to other vendors? We remember going through all the stats, y'all. Having great customer service, a great working relationship, a great partnership, not vendor attitude with your clients, getting these brand champions it is going to go a long way. Okay, so I wanted you to tell me how can you use that customer service as a different differentiator. For us, we're very nimble and we can customize things on the fly. So um, because I used to work at a health plan, I also know what these health plans are going to ask for most of the time in, re in what they're reporting. Um, so usually I have an unfair advantage when it comes to the anticipating their needs because I was already in their spot before. And so what happens is they'll say, oh, Renata, can you report the data out this way? Well, sometimes my team will chuckle because they already know I told them this may come up in the meeting that they may want it this way. And absolutely, we can customize it and make it to, to what you need. And number six, last, uh, list areas where you can provide excellent customer service to your client. And so take your people out to eat, y'all. If, you, if, you, once, once, if you're going to visit your client, you're going to do an on-site meeting, Take your people out to lunch, bring donuts, bring something, okay? Show your appreciation. Uh, I know in the space that I'm in with Medicare, I have to be careful with gifts, but anytime we go and do anything on site, we always take our people out to dinner, okay? It's just great customer service. It gives you an opportunity to build relationship and rapport with these people that's outside of work, okay? Remember, we're doing partnership and not vendors. Uh, timely responses. If they hit you up with an email or text message or something, don't wait four or five days to respond to people. Give timely responses. Give accurate responses um, and give thorough responses because what you're doing is you're going to try and set your client up for success. We're entrepreneurs, but most of the time our clients may be an employee somewhere else. 
You want your client to look great in front of whoever they're reporting to because they can now say, oh, you brought on PSIN. They are such a great vendor. We love working with them. That makes you your that makes the employee look more credible because they were able to bring in a solution to the company. So you're helping them with their career trajectory. Um, so those are areas where you can provide excellent customer service. That brings us to the end of this sell the need service to sell first webinar. Uh, there will be some more. If you've made it all the way to the end, this was actually not a live webinar. I pre-recorded it just so I can get the information out there. And what I want to do, because this is so much more fun in a live environment, is I want to host another event it'll be a free event uh, where on live we can actually go through your sheets and if you have a business idea or you're already in business and you want to ask me some questions uh, we can go over those live in a live environment it is much more fun that way i've actually given this presentation twice and it's more it's more fun when it's more interactive because of course i'm only giving the bulk of the examples from my experience and from the experience from um, when I've delivered this message a couple of other times and some of the students uh, would actually have a question. But I want to be able to help you out as much as possible. And so I will be opening up a live event where you can actually attend and we can go through some of the questions that you may have uh, from attending the webinar today. So I pray that you are very successful in getting your business off the ground or if you already got it off the ground, I pray your success in getting even more clients and for everybody to have more brand champions and more client retention as we take over being great entrepreneurs and doing it all with exemplary customer service. Thank you all so much.